Frontier Town, the saga of the Roaring West. Frontier Town. El Paso, Cheyenne, Calgary, Tombstone. Frontier Town. Here is the adventurous story of the early West, the tamed and the untamed, from the Pecos to Powder River, Dodge City to Poker Flat. These are the towns they fought to live in and lived to fight for, teeming crucibles of pioneer freedom. Frontier Town! I'm Chad Remington, and in Dos Rios, the frontier town I live in, I'm known as a cowtown lawyer. But frankly, even with the people's court and the miners' court, there really isn't enough law business to dignify me with the title of attorney. And some folks say I'm more of a troubleshooter, and I guess probably they're right at that. It was only a short time ago that I thought I'd get away from Dos Rios, my office, the little ranch my dad left me, and trouble. So, gathering up Cherokee O'Bannon, who used to peddle patent medicine but now rents livery horses in Dos Rios, we set out for Spread Eagle Lake, a deep, cold, blue lake in the distant mountains, where I had heard the green hunchback, the steelhead, and the rainbow ran up to 10 pounds. To get to Spread Eagle, we cut through the Rockies and came down on a pass through which the railroad was building. Counselor? You sure you want to go through with this fishing trip? You bet I'm sure, Cherokee. Why? Well, I was just thinking. Fish live in water. If there's one thing I abominate, it's that aqueous fluid chemically known as H2O. Unless it's been frozen to ice and put into a drink. Well, Mr. O'Bannon, then maybe this little fishing expedition will change your mode of living. Well, that's what I was afraid of. Not meaning to change the subject, but have you heard anything about the railroad building here through the gorge? I think I heard some talk about it. It's going to be a great thing for the West, this network of rails. It will probably mean the eventual end of the frontier. Say, look, Chad, isn't that a work train stop down there with all the track layers working around it? It sure is. What's more, just approaching the work train down beyond that bend, is an engine with one flat car, and it's going like 60. Silly blue blazes. If that engine doesn't slow down, and soon there's going to be one heck of a smash-up. Doggone it. What's the matter with the man in the locomotive cab? Why doesn't he slow down? Doesn't he see the work train with all the workmen around it? Well, that engineer must be blind. Look, he's just starting to slow down now. And now, I'm afraid, it's about one minute too late. That fool, he's driving right into a smash-up. I ever felt so helpless before. There was nothing Cherokee or I could do to stop the engine, and when it plowed into the back end of the work train, it scattered men in a circle 200 yards wide. Cherokee and I lost no time getting down there, and when we did, we found the division boss who'd been riding the flat car surrounded by about 50 of the angriest men we'd ever seen. Ah, you fools! Do you, do you think we deliberately drove that engine into the work train? It don't make no difference to us why you did it, Clooney. You killed two men and one with me brother. You're nothing but a foul, low-down murderer. Don't you go calling me no murderer. There's a lucky thing there weren't more men killed. Speed, speed. That's all you and that railroad ever think of. Well, we got some speed for you, Clooney. The speediest trip you ever made. To a graveyard. <laughs> All right, go on. Gun me down. Fine chance I'd stand against 50 of you. I don't need no gun for a snake and legs of you, Clooney. Hey, stop. Hey, stop. Hey, stop. Hey, stop. Hey, stop. Hey, stop. All right, now, 
I'll hold it, you two. Cut it out. <laughs> Let me go. Let me go. Don't don't take your hands off of me. Now oh, that's enough. All right, now cut it out. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Thanks, mister. I didn't stand much of a chance with a mob on my neck. Who's he coming in here? All right, the lot of you. I don't know who's right in this argument, but I'm not going to stand by and see 50 men go after one. Get out of my way, you stupid! Sir, 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 Sir. Now, if there are any of the rest of you who are interested in target practice, I'm right here to oblige. Well, mister, you're sure a handy man to have around. Just handy enough so that I think this railroad I work for might have an awful good job for a gent like you. Well, thanks, but we're sort of on a vacation. Heading up towards Spread Eagle Lake. Well, I'm bound up that way myself, so if you'd like to put your horse on that flat car, I'd be glad to give you a lift. On the way, maybe we could do a little talking. <laughs> Mind you, I'm not taking sides in this issue. From what we saw, the men were right. This engine was going much too fast. Sure, sure, sure. But is it the railroad's fault if the engineer was daydreaming? Besides, if you saw it and figured there'd be a crash, that track lane crew saw it too and should have gotten out of the way. Well, you may be right about that, Clooney. But those men would never agree with you. Wouldn't surprise me a bit if in the mood they're in, they don't try to get even with the railroad. Huh. If they do, there'll be a lot more of them killed. But legally, we still got a few laws around here, and they won't do those mobs any good. And that's where I figured maybe you could help. We could help? How? After all, you're both natives out here. It shouldn't be any trouble at all for you to win their confidence and try to talk them out of destroying any railroad property. After the row I had with that Pat McCarthy today, he could have taken us apart right along with your roadbed the way he feels. Look, uh, you see that little bunch of buildings up ahead there? That's the junction. Now, once we get there, you come in and talk to our general manager, Mr. Sherwood, before you make up your mind one way or the other. Uh, don't you see, Sherwood? If O'Bannon and Remington would take the jobs and could worm their way in with the work crew, well, that'd be just like having a spy in their camp. We'd know everything that was going on. Well, I'm not sure about that, Clooney, but, uh, okay, have them come in. Right. Uh, come on in, fellas. Mr. Sherwood will see you now. Uh, come on in, boys, and let's talk about this job. Now, believe me, Mr. Sherwood, Cherokee and I aren't looking for jobs. Yeah, but this is different. It's not a permanent job, and uh, what's more, by helping the railroad complete its work... You'll be helping everyone around here. What we want is to stop the wanton waste of material and lives. In other words, you want a troubleshooter so you won't have any shooting trouble. <laughs> Remington, you hit the nail right on the head. Well, all I can say is I hope we don't end up hitting it right on the thumb. <laughs> I wish you'd stop looking so glum, Cherokee. We can make enough in a few weeks on this job to pay for two months' vacation. Then you can hunt and fish to your heart's content. As far as I'm concerned, working for the railroad, we're hunting and fishing right now. Fishing for information and hunting for trouble. Well, you may be right at that. And if the first piece of information we got is right, that hard-headed Irishman, Pat McCarthy, lives just across this next hill in one of those little shacks. And if we can talk some sense into him, since it was his brother who was killed in that crack-up, half the battle should be won. I'm not calling you an optimist, but if you think that Irishman is going to forgive and forget so soon, you simply don't understand. Now, what the dickens? Better hold it, gentlemen. That's the only way the next shot's going to catch you is after it goes clean through you. By the eyes of March, Chad, it's a red-headed girl. Not that your lives are so much. But if you set any value on them, then get out of here before... Just a minute, I... young lady. 
I came up here to see a man by the name of Pat McCarthy on business. The only business he'd have with you two is to punch holes through you where I leave off. Who in blazes do you think you are? The name's McCarthy, too. Sharon McCarthy. It was my father who was killed by the railroad. Well, Miss McCarthy, I don't know if your Uncle Pat's at home or not, but I'm waiting here until I see him. If you take just one step... I don't know if you're bluffing or not, but there's only one way I can find out. <laughs> That's it, Chad. Wrestle that gun away from her. If I ever get this barrel to your... A raining pink elephants. That 30-30 slug went right through the brim of my Stetson. Here, Cherokee, just for that, you can hold a rifle. Why don't you leave us alone? You just had a pretty good illustration of why I don't. Now, if everybody who's been working for the railroad has your kind of temper... The road wouldn't have enough flat cars to hold all the coffins to get them out of here. She's as much of a cantankerous catamount as her uncle. All right, Sharon. I'll take care of these two spalpeens myself. Oh, howdy, McCarthy. Don't you go howdy and me. I got my own idea of a man who'd do what you did to a girl. And I got a good notion to give you what I should have given you this morning. Well, since you seem bound and determined to get it out of your system, why don't you try it? And don't think I won't fight you. Take it. Take it. You sir. All right, now take it easy, McCarthy. Sure. I don't want to hurt you. Why, you hurt me. Billy Blue Blazes, Chad. The old Tad knocked you down. Well, it looks like we're both down. Uh, young fella. <clears throat> Wherever did you get a wallet like that? I got his gun, Uncle Pat. I'll cover him. Here, Sharon. For shame. Put that gun down. Now, we don't shoot anybody around here unless they stand on their own two feet. Well, that sounds fair enough. So how about us both getting up? <laughs> My jaw hasn't been hit that hard since the day I left Dublin. Well, I don't know how long that's been, McCarthy. <laughs> But my mouth feels as if I'd been kicked by a mule. <laughs> <laughs> of course, if, if you aren't a mule or a stubborn, I've still got a few things I'd like to talk over with you. Well, uh, uh, I don't promise to do any more than listen. But if you try to pull anything on me by the Blarney Stone, I'll fill your hide so full of holes that when they lure you into your coffin, you'll weave like an accordion. <laughs> no, uh, come on. <laughs> We'll return to the second act of Trouble Rides the Rails, our exciting frontier town adventure, in just a few moments. Frontier Town. I don't know if you've ever tried to convince a hard-headed Irishman of anything, but maybe having an O'Bannon with me helped, because even though it was against his better judgment and that of his nieces, Sharon, Pat McCarthy finally agreed to convince his fellow workers not to tear the new railroad apart. I can't say that I blame Sharon particularly, because her father had been killed. But before Cherokee and I could really blame anybody, a wave of criminal attacks and depredations broke out that just about blasted the railroad out of the Rockies.
Now, wait a minute, Mr. Sherwood. Before you go flying off the handle, Chad and I are telling you the truth. And I'm telling you both the truth. This railroad is paying you to stop trouble. And almost from the day you started, trains have been held up, express and mail shipments stolen. If you'd only get me a chance, Mr. Sherwood, and listen and... Chance my eye. I recommended you to Mr. Sherwood and put you on the payroll. Now things are worse than they were before. If your only interest is in the payroll, you can forget about it. Oh, so that's the kind of man you are. As soon as the going gets tough, you quit. If you were about 20 years younger, Sherwood, I'd knock those words back down your throat right along with your teeth. But I'm keeping this job as long as you'll let me. And I don't want to be paid for it either. Your hinky dink little railroad probably needs the money worse now than we do. Well, confound it, we're not getting any place losing our temper. No, we're certainly not. Mm. Not only have you lost your temper, but apparently you've lost your judgment. You, you mean judgment. Cherokee and I have been with, with McCarthy and the rest of that track laying crew ever since you turned the job over to us. And I take my solemn oath that none of them had anything to do with looting or damaging your trains. Well, solemn oath or not, Clooney identified several of them. Saw them with his own eyes. I certainly did. Oh, you did, huh? Maybe you've got a reason of your own for saying that you identified them. Oh, yeah? Well, I got a good reason right now to make mincemeat out of you, Remington. Oh, so? Why? Guilty conscience? Well, I'll guilty conscience you. Clooney! You need no gunplay! <laughs> Remington! Why... That's the fastest draw I've ever seen. H how did you do it? You knocked Clooney's gun clean out of his hand. Yeah, go on, Sherwood. Why don't you give him a medal? Well, I got a couple of other decorations to hang on here. <laughs> Working for the same company, Clooney. I hate to do this. But if you've got something on your conscience, maybe this will shake it out of... <laughs> I'm sure sorry about breaking up your office, Mr. Sherwood. Hmm. And I guess this is the end of the line for us. No, no, not at all. Now I'm doubly convinced you're the kind of men I want working for me. But I do think you're wasting your time when you suspect Clooney of having any ulterior motives. Well, it wouldn't be the first time I've been wrong. But I certainly don't understand how he was able to make such positive identification of those men. Well, then, Remington, <clears throat> in that case, maybe you'd better find out. And if you do find out, you may have found the men who've been trying to put this railroad out of business. <laughs> of which I was certain. There was someone out to wreck the railroad. And even though it could have been Clooney, who as division boss would know about express shipments and things like that, I was dead certain in my own mind that it wasn't Pat McCarthy and his gang of track layers. But to be completely sure, Cherokee and I hightailed it back to McCarthy's shack, where we found no one home but Sharon. Miss Sharon, I don't like calling a pretty girl, an Irish lass at that, a prevaricator. But I have a feeling that you know where your Uncle Pat went. Well, I guess there's no use trying to protect him. Uncle Pat went into town. Into town? You mean into that cafe, don't you? Chad, don't let Uncle Pat get into trouble. He really means so well. And... I'm sure he means well, Sharon. But at the rate he's going, he'll have a lot of company. Or even the streets are paved with good intentions. All right, come on, Cherokee. This should be one trip you'll enjoy. We're going back to town and into that saloon. <laughs> Fill that glass up again, Pat. Fill it up, eh? <laughs> Uh, you know something, uh, Pharaoh? Yeah. Uh, this reminds me of the night that I was in Dublin. It reminds me of uh, why I left Dublin. Why? You see, I was, uh, was a hard carrier over there, and I... Well, I had a lot of trouble there, and I, I lost all my money, and I, I, I came into a bar. You did? Yes, and the, the boss of the bar says to me, he says, uh, have a drink, so I said, all right, I will, you know, we have yeah. a drink, so... 
So I decided I'd have a drink and, uh, well, I, I couldn't pay for it. Ah. So, no, I, I don't want you to get me wrong. Then I joined the sale investment, see, and then I come to this country and work for the railroad. <laughs> well, well no, we have that drink. Well, it, thank you, fellow, but I've got to tell you the truth. I, I haven't got the, the wherewithal to pay for it. Well, don't let that worry you, Pat. Uh, no. You and the rest of the boys who work for that double deal in railroad, you're good with me until you get your next job. Well, <laughs> that's fine. I, I don't know when the next job is going to be, but if you don't mind, give me that drink. That, that's fine, Pharaoh. Fine, fine, fine. Yeah. fine. Hey, Nib. Yeah, yeah, boys. Now, you give McCarthy anything he wants. And that's how hey, 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 Pharaoh. Here comes that lawyer who's been gumshoeing for the railroad. Pour McCarthy a drink, huh? Handle these two. Okay. Howdy, Remington. Buy you a drink, too? Well, I don't mind if you do. thanks, Pharaoh. Well, what are you doing here, Pat? Oh, uh, well, me. Well, as <laughs> you see, I, I came in here because well, I had some errands right, to do. come on, Pat. You're going home. Just a minute. Nobody's coming into my place and ordering the customers out. Come on, Pat. Now, maybe if I had just one drink with Pat, then maybe he'd feel better about coming, Chad. Well, McCarthy's staying here just as long as he wants to. Fair enough. You ready to leave now, Pat? Well, I, uh... <coughs> oh, okay, Chad. I, I... Now, you see, Farrell, he's ready to leave right now. All right, Pat, let's go. Ah, what a waste of time to be in a place like this and then leave empty hands. Whiskey, whiskey all around and not a drop to drink. Well, Farrell, now that Remington's dragged McCarthy out of here, how are you going to get the information on what express shipments the railroad has got coming through and when? Suppose you leave the worry into me, Nib. Yeah, yeah. If Remington and that rumhound keep sniffing around, they're going to find out for sure. You can't keep the railroad from believing it's the workmen and the workmen believing it's the railroad forever. We don't have to. Uh, forever. With what we got off the express cars the last two trips, Plus, we're going to get the next time. We can retire forever and live like kings. Yeah, well, all I can say is I hope you're right, boss, because I got a feeling in my bones it spells trouble. Spells trouble with a capital T. <laughs> Uncle Pat, you've got to answer Chad's questions. He told you that Clooney claims to have identified us and that last railroad wreck and hold up. Sharon, you know we had nothing to do with it. Maybe you didn't. Maybe it was Clooney, I don't know. But we've got to find out before the only station the railroad has left is Mark Boot Hill. Come on, Pat. Is one Irishman to another? Tell me. You've been hanging out at that saloon of Pharaoh's a lot, haven't you? He certainly has. And where he got the money for it, I don't know. Well, Pharaoh told me that I, I didn't have to pay him. You didn't have to pay him in cash. Now, tell the truth, Pat. Hasn't Farrah been pumping you a lot, asking you questions about the railroad? Well, uh, <coughs> well, sure, Chad. We talked about the railroad, naturally. Uh-huh. And when you were just there, you told him what I told you this morning, about that gold shipment that's coming through on the late afternoon Fast Express. All I said was I didn't see how people with any sense could trust a broken-down railroad like that with $80,000 worth of gold. Pat, without meaning to, you've done us all a favor. And I think before that express shipment reaches the junction, the railroad trouble in this part of the country is going to be cleaned up. Cleaned up for good. Pat, hey. will you make those men of yours shut up? Here comes the train. Chad, look! There's a big bunch of men on the other side of the gorge, all dressed up like railroad workmen. Well, I'll be hamstrung. Looks like Clooney knew what he was talking about. Way those filthy sidewinders. No wonder the railroad company thought it was us. All right, get your guns out, men. All right, good. As soon as they make for a break for it, we're ending this once and for all. Okay, boys, now ride. And be careful with your shots. We want to take as many as we can alive. <laughs> Clooney and a bunch of those railroad detectives. Why the... Turn those horses, boys! And let's get out of here! Uh, 
Claro. Hey, we're, we're cut off. Here comes Remington and his crowd, ears over elbows. Off them horses, boys, and head for the rock. And this'll take care of you, Mr. Clooney. I got his gun, Clooney. Now cover the rest of them while I get Pharaoh. <laughs> I still got this derringer, Remington. Well, you better use it before I connect with this. <coughs> Pat, lend Clooney a hand, because the reward money that railroad's going to pay you will more than make up for everything you've lost. <laughs> oh, well... Remington, I'll forgive you all you did to me the way you rounded up those crooks for us. Hey, hey Mr. Sherwood? Uh, we certainly will, Clooney. And speaking on behalf of the railroad, we certainly made a good deal when we hired Remington and O'Bannon. Oh, that reminds me. Where is Cherokee? Well, <clears throat> after all he did and the uh, thirst he developed, I gave him the money to go down and buy a bottle of whiskey. Oh, well, now, Mr. Sherwood, <laughs> that was mighty nice of you. Yeah, except that Cherokee got so excited, he dropped the bottle and it spilled all over the wooden floor. Oh, oh that oh. poor man, he's probably sick about it. Well, he has gone to the doctor's, but he'll be all right as soon as the doctor's gotten all the splinters out of his tongue. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Frontier Town, starring Reed Hadley and featuring Wade Crosby, is a Bruce Ells production. Story and direction by Paul Franklin. Music written and played by Ivan Dittmars. Be sure to be with us again same time next week for another fine action-adventure story with your favorite young Western star, Reed Hadley. And now this is Bill Foreman telling you that Frontier Town comes to you from Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs>